So you've been wanting to play the spicy boy in The Elementalist, yeah, but you've heard literally from everyone that Ellie is downstate rotation. It has so much going on with it, and it's incredibly hard, and mostly that is true. The Elementalist is not an easy class to play, let alone master, but that is where I'm hoping to help you. This is a complete guide to get you competent on The Elementalist and its elite specializations. We will start with simple concepts, play styles, and then gearing, and of course move into more of the elite specializations and their gameplay and more specifically what you can do to avoid downstate let's start out with the most important lesson which is of course your attunements as a rule of thumb for your four attunements they function essentially the same way with each weapon that you utilize fire is burning and strike damage water is chilling healing and cleansing air is strike damage weakness vulnerability and crowd control some blinding and of course, Earth is defenses, bleeding, crippling, immobilizing effects, and even reflective auras. As you play the profession, you will be able to understand the flow that the Elementalist has. This will be discussed a little bit more when we talk about gameplay. These attunements will be enhanced depending on the trait lines that you choose, such as the fire trait line baseline gives you a fire aura when you jump into fire attunement. Air trait line gives you movement speed when you switch into it, and so on and so forth. This also does not mean that you should avoid the attunements that you did not trait into. Even if you don't go through the water trait line, water attunement still offers fantastic healing. Earth attunement still gives great defensives, so don't skip them. Because of the constant need to switch back and forth, the first lesson that you should learn is setting up your keybinds for your attunements. Having them set to something like a mouse side button or even a quick combination of keys can work. Personally, I have mine set as Shift 1, Shift 2, Shift 3, and then Shift Q for each of the four attunements. Set what works best for you, and then you are one step towards playing the alley. Now, let's take a look at your trait line since we brought them up. As mentioned, each trait line you choose improves the corresponding attunement that you enter. Arcane is the only one that is not tied to a specific attunement, but improves your attunement swapping baseline, and that has a mix of traits that improve a variety of things, boon up time, condition, and even some healing. Having said that, your focus of each of these trait lines should be looking to maximize the capabilities of those attunements and finding the appropriate pairing. For example, the air trait line has a trait, one with air, that gives you super speed when you switch into air attunement. If you pair it with the Grandmaster trait, fresh air, you can drastically increase your super speed uptime by critically striking, then switching in and out of other attunements, and then back to the air attunement, constantly proccing this effect. Or you can pick the fire line and use the power overwhelming trait, which gives you extra power when you are at or above a certain might boon threshold. And what you do here is pair it with Pyromancer's Pussyance, which gives you might stacks when using any of the baseline skills in Fire Attunement. This next point is to make sure that your trait lines are cohesive and not pulling in too many different directions. Research some up-to-date builds for the Elementalist. You can find these on Meta Battle for general use, Snowcrows for top-end DPS builds, or guild gen for pvp world v world builds links are included in the description below now it's important in your weapon choice as this dictates how you will play first understand that the elementalist cannot weapon swap in combat i mean we already have five skills for each of the four attunements that means 20 active skills at any given time lots of things to do let's not make it any more complicated your weapon choice is critical for this Base Elementalist has access to the Staff for long range damage, Scepter for medium, and Dagger for close range. Elementalist can also pair the Scepter or Dagger with a Focus or Dagger offhand to give themselves a desired combination. Focusing on the Staff first, it offers great range and decent AoE strike damage, as well as great support through their water and air attunements. The Staff, while at a safe range, typically hits the weakest out of the weapon choices for the Elementalist. With group support, however, in various game modes such as World vs. World, the staff skyrockets in value, as it has a ton of area of damage, effects, and control. The Scepter is a mid-range weapon that is very strong both at condition damage as well as strike damage, but also brings some balance with defenses and healing through the earth and water attunement. This weapon works exceptionally well for those of you who know how to keep your distance and keep damaging foes. 
Dagger is close range and rightfully so high damage as well as being similar to the scepter in that of the fact that it can crowd control, it can heal, it can do both strike and condition damage. This weapon, however, has the shortest range and requires the players to be able to manage themselves while being attacked in melee, or at least being chased in melee. The focus and the dagger both have great added effects, keeping in the mind that the focus sits mostly at ranged, the dagger focusing at close range. Having said all this, there is not a secret to the weapon skills that you will get in any attunement. Similar to the way that the Revenant and their legendary stances play, you get the same skills every single time. This is what messes with a few new elementalists, as they tend to get anxious with kiting and remembering the correct skills at any given position. Take the time to incorporate muscle memory. This will absolutely be one of the most important points for you to learn, especially about the weapons. Integrate the patterns and skills into memory by practicing, and it will vastly improve your capabilities as a blossoming elementalist. What is your biggest hurdle when playing the elementalist? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'm curious. Next, let's look at our last point, the utility skills. The utility skills vary from effectiveness and the traits that you choose, and in my experience, the core utility skills are not all equal, save for some, of course, niche circumstances. The popular slash stronger ones tend to be the cantrips, signets, and glyphs, whereas conjured weapons and arcane skills are not as up to par. That is not to say that you shouldn't use them. If you enjoy playing with a conjured fire axe or the arcane shield skill, by all means, please do so. But most optimal builds utilize the other three categories depending on the game mode. Signets are probably the most used because of the offensive and defensive capabilities that they bring. For example, in open world and PvE, the Signet of Fire and the Signet of Restoration work incredibly well, whereas in PvP and Worldly World, Signet of Air is always a decent choice. These skills work fantastically when you incorporate the Earth Grandmaster trait, which is written in stone, which allows you to keep the passive effect even after using the active effect of a Signet. Next is Glyphs. These are more popular in PvE as they can have great effect on relatively stationary targets. Whereas Cantrips are more defensive utility skills, and of course my favorite recommendation is the Lightning Flash ability. Cantrips can be very strong in PvP and Worldly World as they have stun breaks, cleansing, and even temporary invulnerability. Now the Conjured weapons can have some niche or meme usage. For a while, the best PvP elementalist build in the Catalyst was utilizing a Conjured Earth Shield as its utility skill. I've personally used the Lightning Hammer to absolutely obliterate people. I mean, outside of that, the Elite Weapon skill Fiery Greatsword is utilized in top-end DPS builds for strike damage, but outside of just using a handful of skills and they don't really see all that much use after that. The Arcane line works as an emphasis to trigger critical strikes in turn can proc certain traits like burning or arcane precision. In the end, all skills can be used, but as mentioned, there are a few that are significantly stronger than others currently. Major point here being understanding how and when to use these skill choices. Realize what style of play you are after with your weapon and your other skills and trait lines and pick the ones that complement it the best. Okay, so now let's take a look at playstyle for the Elementalist. Because of the flowy nature of the attunements, it does not always pay to sit in a single attunement and cast the same ability over and over again until the other one comes back up. Choosing the right flow for your combat and when you need to switch attunements is what will make you a competent Elemental wielder. Generally speaking, the Elementalist works best by their ability to sustain. They have some incredibly strong bursts, but realize that their ability to survive in combat by utilizing all four elements is where they shine. Depending on the weapon choice, your first priority here is to choose your engagement. Knowing that the Elementalist is not necessarily the most durable class when handling elite or champion level mobs, this may require you to switch your weapons or your skills to survive that particular encounter. Instead of using daggers, you switch to Scepter for the range, and perhaps select the Super Speed Fresh Air build, which allows you to kite almost indefinitely, and keep enemies at bay while you whittle them down. This of course is just an example, but analyzing what you can and cannot take down can greatly improve your time as an Elementalist. You may come across a time where you need to use the Water Attunement for its healing, but it is on cooldown. In these circumstances, it's best for you to use either your mobility or defensive utility skills to keep you alive until you can access a water again. 
Lightning Flash, as mentioned, is my go-to. So I may flash to create distance and then keep moving until Water Attunement is ready again. As a point as well, never forget that Air and Earth both have great crowd control, and sometimes crowd controlling enemies may be the difference between life and downstate. You will find what works best for how you would like to play, and where you want to be. But remember, mobility and sustain is the elementalist's best friend. My recommendation, aside from these points that I've already made, is first learning Glyph of Lesser Elementals, as this gives you a pet that can hold aggro and deal damage while you kite and pepper down foes. My second point to assist in the leveling process is pay attention to your item gear levels. Because the Elementalist is already fairly squishy, if you are in a level 40 story mission and you still have a level 13 piece of gear, it might be time to upgrade. I suggest taking a look at the trading post as most gear under the level of 80 is fairly cheap. All right, so I'm going to briefly talk about gear and builds because of the sheer amount of different builds that are out there. I'm going to talk general use, and as you understand more of the Elementalist, you can make better assessments at which you think would fit your playstyle best. I've linked a build down below that I believe works well for open world and most content as a core Elementalist. The core, Ellie, and really any form of Elementalist, can thrive utilizing the Celestial stat line, which can be basically your best friend for all content. It offers defenses, healing, condition, power, you name it. Every stat gets improved. This build has an emphasis on mobility and strike damage because we are taking fresh air, so when we critically hit, again, we gain super speed as well as Fury to increase our critical strike chance further. We also use Glyph of Elementals that offers us other targets to distract our enemies so that we can keep attacking while not having to always worry about being attacked. When we use the Elite skill, we are also specced into Final Shielding, which gives us an Arcane Shield proc for some extra protection and blocking. This build is great for general use and will be fantastic for those of you who are learning the Elementalist. If you are still new to the Elementalist, that means that you have to like this video and then subscribe. You gotta, I just don't make the rules. Now let's take a look at the Tempest, the Heart of Thorns Elite Specialization. This takes the attunement swapping and slows it down, which after a short time allows you to overload the attunement you are currently in for those extra effects. This is a channeled ability, so it takes a couple of seconds to complete. My personal favorite is the air overload, which summons a massive thunderstorm around you, dealing high damage to enemies. All of these overload skills exemplify the attunement's main abilities. Overload fire does more burning. Overload air does some really good strike damage. Overload water offers some crazy healing and overload earth cripples and bleeds. The Tempest straight line has a stronger emphasis on boons and support of allies as well as you could have guessed it, the Tempest is a fantastic support. They also have access to Alacrity, which is one of the key end game PVE boons, reducing all cooldowns on allies who have this boon, Alacrity. Tempest also offers multiple sources of protection, as well as applying multiple auras to allies, but that's also not to say that they can't be a DPS. The Tempest gains access to the Warhorn as a weapon, which allows them to apply even more boons to allies and damage and control enemies. Their new utility skill is Shouts, which of course has a dual effect, usually aiding allies and harming enemies. Given this effect, the Tempest requires to be mid to close range to be effective for most content. They are similar to the core Ellie as they are not incredibly durable in open world and PvE, but they work fantastic when you have a group of friends there to support you, so you can support them. Next, moving on to the Weaver, the Path of Fire specialization. This is a bit more challenging as they combine different attunements and offer a new weapon attack called a dual attack when they switch from one attunement to the next. The attunement swapping is rapidly sped up, allowing swapping to occur more frequently. The first two abilities of your weapon skills are from the attunement that you just switched into, and the last two are the, from the attunement that you just left, and the middle one being the dual attack. This is where the muscle memory comes into play. The Weaver's trait lines focus around their dual attacks and improving mobility and swiftness uptime, mainly. This can also be selected to improve overall strike damage and condition damage. The Weaver's weapon in and of the sword, which puts them directly up in front in melee, with a wealth of attacks that can heal, control, and of course, damage enemies. Their dual attacks, with a number of conditions that are extremely powerful, also have a number of crowd-controlling effects. 
The skills that the Weaver gains are the stances, which offer temporary benefits based off of the attunement that they currently are in, mostly. Their elite skill is without a doubt one of the most challenging skills to utilize properly as it requires you to dance through all four attunements within a very short window. But if you can pull this off, you have a massive damage boost for a short period of time, as well as a very unique crowd control effect at the end. Now, the main playstyle of the Weaver, especially the Sword Weaver, is a tankier sustained master, able to stay in and last longer than most enemies, utilizing their barriers and healing, while also doing a ton of damage from both sides. The Weaver is a fantastic choice in a number of endgame situations, with heavy emphasis on DPS, both strike and condition. Lastly, let's talk about our big boy, the Catalyst, the End of Dragon's Elite specialization, and one of my personal favorites. The attunements are normalized here, but the Catalyst gains access to the Jade Sphere, which lays down a field to allow them to use combo finishers within it. The Jade Sphere operates on an energy system, so as you are using weapon skills, you gain energy. The main emphasis of the Catalyst is Aura Generation. Every single finisher that they use grants them an Aura. When they gain an Aura, they gain a stack of Elemental Empowerment, which increases all stats up to a cap of 10. The trait lines look to enhance this effect of Elemental Empowerment, while also producing side effects from the Aura generation, such as damage reduction, damage output increases, things of that sort. And the weapon is the Hammer, which is of course a very close melee ranged weapon, emphasizing on defenses and durability while also packing a punch in both fire and air. The stacks that we get from Elemental Empowerment allows us to stay in combat for longer durations with our buffed stat capabilities. The Hammer Catalyst also has their Circulars, which is their Hammer Ability 3, that provide passive effects while active for a short duration. The duration can be increased when you switch to a new attunement and then use that Circular. And once you have cycled through all four attunements, you can cast Grand Finale, which deals the effects of all four elements that you just had, and if it is used within a combo field, it acts as a combo finisher. The Catalyst also gains access to the Augment abilities, which have a number of effects from damage, healing, defenses, and even stun breaks. They all have reduced cooldowns if they are used within their corresponding Jade Sphere field. The main playstyle of the Catalyst is an upfront burst melee combatant that has stuns, conditions, and even incredible healing and cleansing. Without a doubt one of the strongest specs in the game, and of course the Catalyst is great fun in my opinion. Alright, so let's review the main points of the Elementalist so that you can start playing better. Number one, keybind your attunements for easy access. Number two, choose cohesive traits that match your build. Number three, learn the weapons and remember the attunement skills. Number four, pick utility skills that complement your weapon and build. Analyze and choose your engagements wisely. Focus on survival and play to the strengths of the Elementalist. Overall, the Elementalist is a fantastic profession and hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for you to understand and play. If you want to learn more about the Elementalist, check out these quick tips that can help you play better. Stay caffeinated, folks.